An amorphous, gelatinous entity from the far reaches of space, the Blob is a creature like no other. Originating in the 1958 classic The Blob, this ancient life form defies our understanding of biology, consuming everything in its path. But what if the Blob were real? What kind of organism could function like this? Today, we'll explore the biology, adaptations, and evolutionary origins of this mysterious creature. The blob is a pulsating mass of protoplasmic material with no discernible organs, skeletal structure, or nervous system. Its physiology seems simple, yet it operates with terrifying efficiency. But what exactly is it? To start, we can categorise the blob as an amorphous organism, a single, undifferentiated mass of living tissue. It lacks the compartmentalization seen in Earth-based life, such as cells or tissues. Instead, it appears to be made up of a vast network of semi-liquid cytoplasm, similar to Earth's slime moulds or amoebas, but on an astronomical scale. Its gelatinous consistency allows it to ooze through tight spaces, engulf prey, and even withstand physical attacks. But this raises an important question. How does the blob grow so rapidly? The blob's most terrifying feature is its ability to consume and grow at an exponential rate. Its method of feeding resembles phagocytosis, the process used by amoebas to engulf food particles. When the blob envelops a victim, it secretes a powerful enzyme that breaks down biological material into simpler molecules, which it then absorbs. The rapid digestion is likely facilitated by a highly efficient biochemical system. The enzymes must be universal, capable of breaking down diverse organic matter from human flesh to plant material. The absorbed nutrients are distributed instantly through the blob's fluid-like body, fueling its relentless growth. But how does it move? Without muscles or a skeleton, the blob likely uses a process called cytoplasmic streaming. This involves shifting its internal fluids to create pseudopods, or temporary extensions, that allow it to ooze forward. Such movement is incredibly energy efficient, making it ideal for a predator with no fixed form. Despite lacking eyes, ears, or even a brain, the blob is remarkably adept at locating prey. But how? One possibility is that the blob uses chemoreception, the ability to detect chemical signals in the environment. It could smell its prey by sensing the carbon dioxide exhaled by living organisms, or the amino acids present in biological tissues. Another theory is that the blob can detect vibrations, much like certain Earth-based creatures. Snakes are the most obvious example of this type of Earth creature. Specialised receptors embedded in its gelatinous mass might sense sound waves or physical movements, guiding it toward potential victims. This decentralised sensory system might be connected to a network of chemical signals that allow the blob to coordinate its movements and feeding behaviours. Think of it as a primitive, distributed nervous system. The blob's ability to grow without apparent limits begs the question, how does it reproduce? The most likely answer is a form of asexual reproduction. If the blob is damaged, smaller fragments of its body might break off and grow into independent organisms. This method, known as fragmentation, is common in simple life forms like starfish and some fungi. Alternatively, the blob might use binary fission, a process where it splits into two equal halves, each developing into a full-sized organism. This would make the blob nearly impossible to eradicate, as every attempt to destroy it could result in more blobs. Or instead, perhaps, it may utilise a method of reproduction called budding. 
instead of fragmenting or splitting entirely, the blob might reproduce through a process similar to budding, seen in organisms like yeast or hydra. A smaller blob could grow from the main body, feeding on surplus nutrients, until it detaches and becomes independent. This form of reproduction would allow the blob to create smaller, mobile offspring, while conserving energy for its own growth. Sporulation is another possibility. The blob might produce microscopic spores capable of surviving extreme conditions, again similar to fungi or certain bacteria. These spores could lie dormant until they encounter favourable conditions, at which point they could germinate and grow into full-sized blobs. This method would make the blob incredibly resilient, allowing it to spread across vast distances, potentially even between planets. The blob did initially arrive on Earth via asteroid and crashed into the United States in the Pennsylvania area. This would mean that sporulation is a distinct possibility as to its reproductive method. The blob might undergo a unique form of mitosis, where, as it divides, it retains collective memory or sensory data from the parent organism. This could result in multiple blobs that share knowledge about their environment, prey or potential threats, acting almost like a hive mind. Now let's consider the blob's evolutionary origins. This creature evolved on an alien planet, so what conditions might have shaped its biology? One theory is that the blob originated on a planet rich in organic matter, but with only a very few large predators. In such an environment, an amorphous organism would have significant advantages, such as adaptability and rapid growth. Alternatively, the blob could be a weapon, an artificially engineered bioweapon designed to consume and destroy organic life. This would explain its hyper-aggressive feeding and apparent immunity to environmental extremes. A third possibility is that the blob is a cosmic hitchhiker, spreading through the galaxy by hitching rides on meteors. This would align with its appearance in the film, arriving on Earth via a glowing meteorite. Now could the blob actually exist in the real world? While the blob may seem like pure science fiction, similar organisms exist in nature. Slime moulds, for example, as previously mentioned, are capable of complex behaviours like problem solving and movement without a brain. Extremophiles, such as those living in hydrothermal vents, thrive in conditions once thought uninhabitable. If life can survive in such extremes, who's to say an organism like the blob couldn't evolve somewhere in the universe? Its biology might be improbable, but it's not impossible. The Blob remains one of science fiction's most iconic and terrifying creatures, a true enigma from beyond the stars. Whether as an evolutionary marvel or a cosmic menace, its biology continues to captivate our imaginations. What do you think? Could the Blob exist? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, thank you for checking out my video on the possible origins, biology, adaptability and physiology of the blob. If you enjoyed this video then please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, it would be much appreciated. And also, if you want to become a patron of mine, you can do so by visiting the link in the description. Thanks for watching again, this has been the Beware Cast, and I'll catch you in the next video, take care.